Thank you for staying with me, still on error component models. In the preceding video, I covered understanding error component models. In this video, I will estimate a one-way error component model, and I will begin with a model that has common intercepts and compare it with a model that has varying intercepts over countries. So we'll look at two scenarios. A common intercept model where the pooled OLS estimation technique will be applied. And the second scenario is where we have a model that has a varying intercept over countries and we will apply the least squares dummy variables estimation technique. Some people often wonder the differences between a pooled regression and a panel regression. Equation 1 is an example of a pooled regression and equation 2 is an example of a panel regression. A pooled regression does not recognize the distinct differences in the data. It assumes that the units or groups are the same, that is, they are homogeneous. Therefore, no dummy variable is included during estimation. The model produces a common intercept, as shown in equation 1. A panel regression, on the other hand, recognizes the distinct differences in the data. It acknowledges that the cross-sectional units or groups are not the same, that is, they are heterogeneous. Therefore, dummy variables are required during estimation. The model has varying intercepts as given by equation 2. So look at the construction of the intercepts and you can see a mu i. The mu i here represents the fixed effects or the individual heterogeneities in the model, which allows the intercept to vary. For us to assess the validity of the fixed effects model, we will apply what is called the pullability test. To do this test, the standard F-test is used to check whether the fixed effects model is more applicable against the common intercept OLS model. The null hypothesis is that all the intercepts are the same, that is homogeneous, against the alternative that the null is not true. And what would be the decision criteria? If the p-value is lower than 0.05, the null hypothesis is rejected and the least square dummy variable, which is also the fixed effects model, is applied. So if you are ready, please load your data and let's get started. If you are interested in my data and the do file, both are available on my website but at a cost. Click on the link to the files in the video description. It will take you to my website where you'll be allowed a one-time download after you have made your payment. So we are right here in Stata. I have my log file on. You can see here, so as a Stata user, make sure you have your log file on to track all your estimations. I have my variables in the variable section. And let me take you through my data editor. In my data editor, I have 54 African countries. Algeria is country one. And Zimbabwe is country 54. Each country has 11 years time span. I also structured my panel data to capture their subregions and their regional economic communities. In addition to that, each of the countries have their own respective IDs. So each country is identified by a numeric number from number 1 to 54. If I take you across the data, out of this whole lot of variables, I'll be using only uh, five variables out of this. We'll get to that in a moment. Because I have five subregions, I created five regional dummies. And for the 11 years, I created 11 year dummies. You can see year 1 to year 11. And for each of the 54 countries, I generated their country dummies for them. So I have 54 dummy variables here, you can see. It's a very wide panel. I have 54 individual country dummies. I have all the codes all written out. To be used in this tutorial. So first thing to begin, make sure you execute your XTSet CID here. If you don't do it, Stata will not execute any of your panel commands. I've already done that and you can see the outcome here. I have a strongly balanced panel. So let us proceed. Because I'll be using the log form of these variables, I have generated all the logs here with this code. And these are the codes I used to generate the dummies I showed you in the data editor. So let's start by estimating 
the model with a common intercept called the Poldo LS. So I have here the variables GDP, labor, trade, mobile subscription, and fixed telephone, all of them in their log form. So I'm going to highlight this and execute the common intercept model. So here's the result for the common intercept model. Out of the four regressors, only trade is not significant. The other three are statistically significant at the 1% level and labor is negative. So how do we interpret this? Let's go now to PowerPoint. So for the common intercept model, from the result I showed you in Stata, you will observe that the pool dweller does not recognize that the countries are different. So it has applied just one common constant to all of them. It assumes that all the units exhibit the same features. So if you want to interpret, you interpret only the significant coefficients. Do not interpret if a coefficient is not significant. It does not make any sense unless it is your key explanatory variable which turned out not to be significant. That is the only reason why you should interpret a coefficient that is not significant. So in this case, trade is not significant, so I won't be interpreting it. So to simplify explanation, I will only interpret labor. The coefficient of labor force is negative and significant statistically at the 1% level. What does that mean? It implies that a 1% increase in the labor force will reduce GDP by 0.716% on average ceteris paribus. For more interpretation on regression outputs, I will advise you to watch my video. I have a detailed video on that. Please watch it. You will find it very helpful. So let us proceed to estimate a one-way error components model where we have a model with constant slope coefficients but varying intercepts over countries. If you see my do file, there are two ways by which this can be done. I can either use the dummy variables that I showed you in my data editor or use what Stata calls factor variables. By a factor variable, all I need to do is just put i dot the country IDs I showed you and you will get the same result. So let us first of all execute the first one whereby I have 53 dummy variables. I wrote here 54 minus 1 dummies. I cannot put 54 dummies. That would be a dummy variable trap at the end because there will be a constant in the model. So I'm only going to include 53 dummies. So let me highlight this and execute. So this is our result from executing the one way or components model with varying intercepts over countries. You can see here now that trade that was not significant in the pool OLS is not significant at the 1% level, even though it's negative. Labor that was significant at 1% level is now significant at the 5% level. The, significant, the significance has reduced to 5%, though the signs is still negative. For mobile phone, it's still positive at the 1% level, but look at fixed telephone. It's not significant and is even negative. So you can see that the result is completely different from the pooled OLS. And the reason is because we have made provision to recognize that the countries in this data or in this sample are not the same. Let us run this command using the factor variable. It's the same result, like I said, but let's execute. So you can see here I dot CID using the factor variable. It's the same result you get. Same result for the coefficients for the country dummies. So here you have CID and the countries are listed in their ordering from number 2 to number 54. If you look through, only about 5 intercepts of these countries are not significant. The constant here represents the intercept for the base country. And the base country in this sample is Algeria. So this is the intercept for Algeria, the base country. How do we interpret this? Now let's move over to PowerPoint. So this is the result I just showed you from Stata involving um, these respective country dummies. So you can observe how the results differ from that of pooled OLS. The usual rule is that do not interpret if your result is not significant. So out of the four regressors here, we can see that FTS, that is fixed telecode, is not significant. But let us interpret one. Let us interpret trade. Same way. We, it has a negative coefficient but significant at the 1% level. So this shows that a percentage increase in trade will reduce GDP by 0.296% on 
on average ceteris paribus. If you compare the Pudo LS and the LSDV model, you will observe that in the LSDV model, both the F statistics and R squared are higher. And like I mentioned before, only five out of the 54 country dummies are not significant. All the 54 countries have different intercepts. I said it before that the coefficient of the constant is that of the base country, Algeria. If you want to give your dummy interpretation, it must be made relative to that of the base dummy. By way of emphasis, watch my video on how to interpret regression outputs for you to know more. Now, let's look at some country-specific interpretation. The GDP in Benin Republic is lower relative to Algeria, according to this data, by minus 2.238. And how do we know? This is because the code for Benin Republic is 3. But to obtain the actual calculation as detailed in Woodred textbook, you take the exponents of the coefficient, deduct one from it, and multiply by 100. So that gives you the actual differential between the intercepts of the two countries. We can also apply it to any country in the sample. I wrote here, the base country can also be changed as desired. Instead of Algeria, you can decide to put Zambia or Zimbabwe or Nigeria or Kenya as the base country. The codes are all written in the file. So the base country can be manipulated or changed as desired by the researcher. So let us proceed to perform the poolability test. I have it all written here and execute the code. So this is the outcome of the poolability test. And remember our decision criteria. Once the p-value is lower than 0.05, you reject the null hypothesis that the countries are homogeneous. So given this p-value, which is significant at the 1% level, we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative which shows that the most, the, the most applicable technique here is the least squares dummy variables technique or the fixed effects estimation technique. So that wraps up one way error component model. Support the video tutorial with any of these readings. I have my papers here, number five and number six. If you are interested, they are available freely on my website, but you have to cut and check out at zero cost. So I have concluded one way error components model where the slope coefficients are constant but the intercept varies over countries. So the next video will cover slope coefficients that are constant but intercept varies over the region. Thank you so much for staying with me. Thank you for your subscription. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for the questions you are sending to me and the topics. I appreciate you all. Crunch Econometrics here is dedicated to teach beginners and intermediate level users. Please don't go away. I'll be right back.